years that we've been robbed of our future. So you can understand why some people don't understand this. And Twitter, I mean social media in particular, just makes it difficult for people to read too much into the past because you know, it's very easy to consume type of uh, interactive platforms. Okay. So, but uh, we have to engage everybody until they come to the realization that this is good for. Okay. Country. Now, um, Kano is arguably one of um, the president's strongest base, yes. and you're here today. Yes. Would you let the people know? Let us know why you are, why you want, or why you're vying for the seat in simple terms. Uh, in simple terms, is that uh, Nigeria deserves a lot better than the people of Kano are getting today. I deliberately came to Kano by road, hmm. just so I could have a road trip experience. And I was shocked to find out uh, the state of the Kano Kaduna Road. And I said to myself, well, you know, people always said, well, this is the stronghold of the president. How come the president hasn't remembered the people of Kano in his kingdom, so to speak, as I've given them a good road? That's just one instance. I also saw a lot of uh, unemployment. I saw a lot of people who, who could have put to work, uh, who were just you know, just getting by, you know. But, but, but uh, people say with the, with the extent of the rot in the, in the country, yeah. that there's only so much you could do in three years. No, there's a lot we can do, and I've always done a lot. I've done, you know, I when nobody thought that we could shake up the media in this com in this country, and that's where I did. Mm. And when I started, nobody believed it. They said, you know, how can you use internet to shake up and show the media space because the internet penetration when I started 12 years ago was very low mm. and today there are more cell phones in Nigeria, smartphones, than they have in Canada and the UK combined. So people are engaging, people are consuming in electronics and they are using social media, they are using all kinds of media you know, at that level to engage and interact. and. Uh, it's, it's something that we started. When I say we, I'm not the only person. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot that can be done if we have the right people. Mm -hmm. For example, we just discovered that between the FRS, which is the Federal Land Revenue Service, Customs, MPA, JAM, EFCC, mm -hmm. we can pay for our national budget without even consulting with the NNPC. This is a revelation that came from even the president's uh, people the other day. They said we made almost three million, three trillion from FRS. Mm -hmm. We made two trillion from customs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, MPA close to one trillion, right? And uh, Jam was declaring some, seven, you know, seventy billion ahead. EFCC said they recovered seven hundred billion. Our budget is eight million this year. We have not touched the NNPC. That means if we don't have oil, we can survive. And this is these figures you have here are not even the real figures. This is figures that you get after all the leakages, the stealing, the looting, and all of the manipulations that happen. Right. So this country can be a great place. You know, I can make it happen. We just need to allow Baba to rest. And we have someone on the line, engineer. Good morning. Yeah, good morning once again, uh, Sophie and, uh, of course, the guest. Okay. Question yeah, or yeah, comment, yeah, real uh, quick, please. Yes, yeah, exactly. I've listened to, to him to really tell uh, Nigerians what he has to offer. Unfortunately, there is no substance on all he has said. He made reference to Kanu Kaduna Road that has been, that, 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 that has been bad. Now, that, that road has been awarded to the Los Vegas. Work has even commenced in some in some section of that road. They mm. that if you travel along that road, you will see that work has actually started. So the issue of saying Papa should go and rest, I don't get it. Papa mm. is contesting on the platform of safety. Mm. So if you have another party, mobilize Nigerians, mobilize you. If you know you are popular, you, you have programs, you have what you can deliver to Nigerians, you mobilize and then you contest against Papa. I have not seen the issue of go and rest, go and rest, go and rest. You are uh, you 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 have said very much in abroad in UK in the uh, US Canada and so on. People contest against each other. They don't ask each other go and resign and go. They contest against. They come up with a uh, you know popular policy uh, program that people buy into. People connect to, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, they get the massive support. 
Yeah. All right, uh, Angelia, we we'll, would we'll allow Mr. Shori respond to your to your comment. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you very Thank you. much. So, what do you say to this? Yes, he, he mentioned that the Colonel Cardinal Road has been awarded. That's three years after Baba came to work, and. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe other other things took priority. Well, well you know, the priority is that you do what is right as soon as you have the time to do. We have no time left. About having less than a year to go, I don't see the construction. I didn't see any uh, Julius Bega construction going on as such. We saw some flashes of patching that is going on on the road. But the point to make to respond to his position is that we are not asking that Baba should resign. Mm -hmm. We are saying clearly, I'm running for office. I, mm -hmm. I'm mobilizing. That's why I do town hall meetings. I'm engaging with Nigerians mm -hmm. to ask them to vote for us so that Baba can be voted out of power. That is, that is the other way, the clear way to state it to him, uh, the engineer. Engineer, I would like to put you to work as well. I, I'm tired of hearing engineers that are not building bridges, constructing roads. Every construction don't need to go to Julius Vega. They need to be more than 20 Julius beggars in this country, and that is what we are going to do come 2019 mm. uh, to create to turn this country into a construction site, mm. so that engineers will not have time to wake up in the morning and be calling radio stations. They should be on site working. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello, good morning. All right. Now uh, he also mentioned something that he hasn't heard you say any anything substantial so far. And I've also heard people react say this a couple of times on on, on social that, media. That's actually not true. Okay. Because of all the candidates that are running at this time, mm. I'm the only one that is talking about infrastructure, infrastructure development. I'm talking about security. I'm breaking it down to them. I'm putting figures and numbers to it, just like I've done just now. Could you turn down Telling you how to radio, fund please. our budget, where to fund the budget from. I've done that. Too. You have not. You can't hear that from other candidates. It's, I'm the one who is talking about mm. infrastructure, anti-corruption, economy. I talk about restructuring, okay. how we declare a state of emergency in the health and sector and the education sector. Right. How would they say that I don't have uh, plans? We, we are putting numbers to it line. and we, are keep, we keep releasing them. Mm. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Please. May we know your name and where you're calling us from? Yeah, this is John Bernard. John Bernard, very quickly, uh, please, your, your question or comment. Yeah, I'll be brave. Uh, welcome, Excellency. <laughs> I don't like the idea of Excellency. We go retire that one too for 2019. You go just they call him Mr. President. That one is enough. The, all these people we know they're excellent. Where they talk, they, where they answer Excellency, that be our problem, bros. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome, Mr. President. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, what I have to say is that uh, I don't have problem of. Uh, Mr. President, coming out again to contest in 2019. Me neither. Where I have problem. Yes, we I have problem is he is putting that mandate sheet to Nigerians that we are the one who says so that he should come out in 2019. That's where I have problem. Because categorically, I would tell you that in three years of his leadership, he cannot come out and give us one completed project that's mm -hmm. all for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And you are telling us you are telling us that Nigeria is imposing a game to come out. No, 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 no. I don't abide that. And it's a good idea that somebody like Tore is coming out now, showing us the way. And they if they share that all the established politicians we have in this country, that none of them have come out boldly as so ready to say that I'm contesting against the president. That's a plus for you. Mm -hmm. talk. But what we Nigerians want to know now is that which party are you actually contesting on so that you know how to work on it? Yes. Thank you. Uh, let's have your thoughts. Sir. Yes, thank you very much. We have said it and I'll repeat it again. We are working with a coalition of parties and the number of parties that are trying to be in the coalition are growing every day as we move from one corner of Nigeria to the other. We are talking to a lot of parties. We don't want to reveal it yet until the coalition has completed its work of coming together and meshing together our agenda. Right now, we think we did do, or what we do is that we are building a movement. Mm. We want to approach this through movement politics you know, very revolutionary movement politics. And for people of Kano, mm. we are bringing back what Amino Kano used to do, to connect with the Talakawas 
and give them a great life. That's why I'm very comfortable today in Kano. Mm. Because okay. I remember, I mean, Kano was a big influence on me as a young person. That there was one man in the north who was not afraid to stand up for the ordinary person. And that's what we are bringing to this. We, we are tired of this politics of Baba said this, Baba said that. We want a politics that engage or engages with the ordinary people and talk about how they can better their life. That's why I'm here in Kano. Mm -hmm. And I, I have boldly stated what I want to do, including making bold statements about what we should do about even our legislative arms. I think so many of them are bodysome. I've spoken about what I want to do specifically about corruption because I've worked on corruption over the last 12 years. I have gathered the list of all the corrupt people. I know the, their names. In fact, when you see the federal government have, or the... Would you be releasing your own list anytime soon? I have been releasing lists forever, but the comprehensive list is in my possession. Mm. And it will be released. That one is a uh, secret for now. I okay. won't do that in a hurry. All right. Because Hello, good morning. Hello. Oh, good morning. Your name, location, comments very quickly. Yes. Good morning. Uncle Kay from Badawali House. All right. Welcome to the show. Yeah, I want to welcome uh, our guests on there. Okay. I will just go to the point. Now and then we hear for talking about uh, the social decay, and that is usually the strategy for taking some of the end of the book. I was thinking what we hear something new. Like, okay, we noticed that the last person that came in, it's not to give us uh, 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 a specific number. Now, what do we really have in this time talking about? Economic change. Mm -hmm. Economic is really, really bad. The economy is bad. Mm -hmm. We also have any like economic evidence and the people have economic change. Okay. Then what I I set of fighting security. Because we don't have to worry about that you get there now. Then you start thinking about the push. We really have this thing sitting on, on, on in place now. So by the time you get there, this will be the thing that is economic change, security uh uh weight of fighting security. Let me hear a take on that thing. Okay. What's your reaction to this? Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the, that very insight, uh, insightful question uh, comment. The economic team will be ready before we come into office May 20, I mean May 2019. Uh, the, my first day in office, mm -hmm. I will declare a national emergency in education health. We will set up a cabinet. Uh, part of the problem we have we had with the last regime or the outgoing regime is that it took them six months. At the time, the Nigerian economy was going through a recession. Yeah. You know, the confidence that investors have as depending on how swiftly you deal with this. Yeah. Another thing they did, which was terrible, was the fact that they maintained a regime of, uh, they had various exchange rates for the Naira, at the time that Naira was fluctuating. And what we heard was that corruption pervaded that regime. It was that like people were just going to the central bank uh, to collect money and sell in the open market. At the point, the Naira was 500 Naira to a dollar. It was because nobody was responding to that emergency at that time to have an economic team in place to look at the issues. We have already designed an economic blueprint that will put money in the hands of, uh, in, in the hands and pockets of our people. I mentioned, and just to remind uh, the engineer who called earlier, that we are going to start by paying minimum wage of 100,000 Naira. That right now, what we have is a minimum wage that is not a living wage, that people deserve more. And some people have said uh, that it will cost inflation. It's not true. What we are doing is that over $5 billion is stolen every month, every year by politicians. And we will not allow that to happen. And we'll take that money and give to workers. We want to pay youth costs. Uh, you call members, 50,000 uh, Naira oh. per month. And let me tell you, some people said it's not possible. I come from the south, Niger Delta region. The Nigerian government is paying 30,000 militants over 135,000 Naira per month for doing nothing. And I can say because there are some of them are, they are our brothers there. So what you are saying is that it's even better to carry arms against the state than to be a worker in this country. So it's very, very important that we address this. When I talk oh, about yeah. health, yes. M most of the things you want to achieve yeah. can't be done without the support of the National Assembly. That's correct. So, uh, and, uh, and how do you intend to achieve we, that? Uh, just as I want to be president, we are also encouraging a lot of young progressive people to become National Assembly members. A lot of the National Assembly people you see today will be unelected. 
in 2019. A lot of them are not coming back. There's a wave of dissent going on in the country. Mm. And you will see a new, it, it won't just be a presidential mm. where you see, you see mm. a lot of senators that are brand new, a lot of House of Rep members that are brand new. And they will be willing, and I'm sure they are work, coming ready to work to make Nigeria progress. Okay. If we, perchance, or we are lucky to have, you know, the bad eggs come back again, especially those who have stolen their state's blind, who think that the Senate is a retirement home for thieves, they, they will be kicked out. They will be given a lot of pressure. They will be recalled. There's a lot of processes to make them, you know, put them in their places. Especially when the Nigerian people want progress. Nigeria is not meant for the Senate or the National Assembly. The National Assembly is supposed to be meant for Nigeria. And that's some of the paradigm shift you are going to see uh, when we come to power. Let me also address the issue of maternal health uh, mortality rate that is very prevalent in this part of the world. That is the reason why we want to put a state of emergency in place in the health sector. And we are planning to immediately employ over 160,000 health workers. We want to create conditions that will bring in doctors that have left the country, fled a long time ago, such as they did in India, where we are spending $2 billion in medical tourism every year. You know that. Now, so, but, but the thing is, we have heard many of these things before. Yes. Other hopefuls are going to come and say the same thing. They are not going to say the same thing because they don't have the character to defend it. We know their records. I have a record of consistency. They don't have a record of consistency. I've been fighting for this country for 30 years. You see, I cannot become a victim of lies that are told by people that I've always fought my entire life. What I'm saying is that people have to just have this strong belief that just as the way I started Sahara Reporters and promised I was going to use it to fight corruption and fight the most powerful people in this country, and I deliver upon it, I will do the same thing in the larger Nigeria. Okay. Now, while we await, you know, the rest of the manifesto, one thing we seem to be certain about is your stance on restructuring, which yes. the Nigerians seem to be for. Mm -hmm. I, am, I, I don't have a problem with what Nigerians want regarding it, and I clarify this everywhere I go. That I am actually for restructuring. Restructuring is part of our SPICER program. The SPICER means security, uh, power, infrastructure, anti-corruption, you know, economy, and restructuring. It's part of it's part of our program already. What I said, and I will repeat again, is that I do not think that the current elders who are fighting for restructuring are honest. And that the first thing we should do is to economically restructure this country in such a way that the 180 million of our people who are in penury and poverty, abject poverty and unemployed, we get to work and get to be paid as against a situation where Nigeria has become the social security of a few, where they just use politics to reward themselves and their cronies. That's what I said. And that as soon as that happened, we can now have Nigerians actually come together and restructure the country. Some of the people, things they are asking for in their restructuring plan needs for us to change our constitution. So why don't we do it at once, including determining whether we need a senate or not? That's so bothersome now. Look at it. A senator takes home 13 million naira per month. If you multiply that by 12 months, it's equivalent to the salary of a federal worker that is getting paid 300,000 naira a month over 35 years. That's unfair. That's unjust. That's bothersome. All right, as we wrap up, let's have your parting shot for Kano people and Nigeria. Kano people, uh, I just want to thank you again for listening to me and having me. I'm going to be around here in Kano for a little while. And I'm here to bring that message of hope that what you have never seen before is about to happen in Nigeria. And I appreciate the reception that we've had in Kano since we arrived here yesterday. And guarantee that you can make this happen. This is... We're just weeks away from rescuing Nigeria completely and taking it back uh, for the Nigerian people. And I'm ready to lead the charge. It's the reason I came to Kano. It's the reason I'll be in Kaduna later today. It's the reason I'll be in every nook and cranny of Nigeria. Guess what? I'm the only person campaigning and engaging. All that politicians cannot even go to town hall meetings without a retinue of 500 policemen and things like that. It shows to you that Nigerians are now ready for a new direction and we are ready to take them in that direction All of right. greatness. My guest this morning has been Omo Elisha Wari, one of Nigeria's hopeful for 2019, convener of the Take Back Nigeria Movement and publisher of Sarah Reporters. It was interesting having you on the show.